I wake up every day to an equation I wrote 15 years ago from which there's only one conclusion. I'm damned for what I do. It's time to talk about Star Wars. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I love Star Wars. Has it burned me in the past? Sure. Have I loved everything about it? Definitely not. But I enjoy it and I go along for the ride. And you know what? It's fine. It's fiction. I can live with a bad series or a bad episode or a half bad movie or whatever and I move on and I hope for the best as it goes on. But now we're getting Skeleton Crew in just a couple of weeks and Andor in a couple of months. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. We talk Star Wars, Batman, and more all the time here. And we're hoping to hit 4,000 subscribers by the end of the year. I burn my decency for someone else's future. I burn my life to make a sunrise that I know I'll never see. And Andor just dropped this picture right here. And I'm like, what? This looks awesome. It's Mon Mothma, Luthen, and my favorite characters in all of Star Wars, the Stormtroopers just hanging out in the background. You're like, what is going on here? Because we know that Luthen, he's not long for the galaxy far, far away. He's not. He's not going to survive this series. I don't care what you say. Maybe he ends up in Arkham. I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think he's going to make it. But I look at this picture and it's telling of the series that we got of season one. You're like, there is real stakes at play here. And I know everyone knows where Andor is going to end up. But you know what? We knew where Anakin was going to end up. We know a lot of things when we go into it, so there's no difference here, really. But there are stakes at hand. Like, Mon Mothma isn't in the sequels at all. I know the books always made her sick and blah, 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 and they kind of just hit her away. But now she's been at the forefront more of Ahsoka and now of Andor. So we know that she survives the events of everything, and we see her post original trilogy. But to what capacity? What happens to her? Could she be in a dark place between Andor and post-sequels? I'd love to see some more of that dynamic. And then we have Luthen. And why are the stormtroopers there? Are they his guards? Are they Mon Mothma's guards? Are they just there to protect her? There's clearly a secret meeting going at play here. And also the color. Look at what they're wearing. Ma, Mothma in white, Luthen in black. He's, is he trying to be deceptive in, in what's going on here? A little dark energy over him. Lucas loved the whites and the darks, right? He had Vader in, in black, Luke in black, when he wanted you to think that he was being pulled to the dark side. I think that this series could be the Empire Strikes Back of and or of Disney plus Star Wars. If you didn't like the first season, if you found it slow, depressing, whatever, I think that's, you know, that's fair, that's subjective, that's your opinion of it, that's fine. But I but if you think about what you want from a second season, which is coming, whether you like it or not, you're getting a second season, you want the best. And what is better than Empire Strikes Back? Return of the Jedi. But what is better than Empire Strikes Back? It is the creme de la creme of sequels. Everyone, whenever you have a sequel, it's always compared to The Empire Strikes Back, right? The Empire Strikes Back is the pinnacle of Star Wars. It is the gold, the gold child of the franchise, and a lot of franchises aspire to be The Empire Strikes Back. Dark Knight might have hit it. There are a few that have come and gone in the history of cinema, but Empire Strikes Back stands as probably the first great sequel ever. You're prob somebody's probably in the comments like, no, actually it was Oh, there's a little dividend or something. So I have a lot I have a lot of hope and faith in Andor season two. From all accounts, it looks like it's gonna be fantastic. We're gonna to get to the Death Star, to the events leading into Rogue One, right before Rogue One's we're gonna see it. We're gonna get some K2SO action and obviously Andor, uh, Bix, uh, Cyril, Deidre, Krennic is coming to town. So this photo right here got me super excited, got me thinking it could be the Empire Strikes Back of it all. But again, but the thing with Andor, and like I said, you might have considered it a slow one, but it was definitely a more adult-oriented series, right? It was more adult-oriented than most things we've got. And even like Mandalorian, which I love Mandalorian, I think that for me is, is the top of the Disney Plus food chain. But Andor was more adult-oriented. It's the nicest looking show we've gotten. And it's a little bit more serious and rugged. And I think a lot of adults really got to di dive their teeth into that. And it gets you thinking like, okay, so Star Wars has been around for 50 years almost. The fans of Star Wars are all 40, 50, 60. Like a lot of fans are older like me. You're older. We're all older. We're getting older as the franchise force has like, passed us by. And I think fans like us appreciate Andor because we've grown up from our original love of Star Wars, the franchise that we love for kids. We're adults now. We don't look for the kid stuff so much. We look for the more adult-oriented material, and Andor gave us that, and I think that fulfilled a need for a lot of Star Wars fans that especially didn't feel like we were getting that with the Obi-Wan series or with the sequel trilogy, and maybe, you know, at parts of it anyway, but most of the sequel trilogy. I don't think people felt like they were getting that, and now I felt like you're getting uh, a series 
that was made for fans who grew up with the franchise. For better or worse, that's what it kind of felt like to me. You might disagree, you might not, but that's how I felt. But on the flip side of all of this is now we're getting Skeleton Crew in two weeks, which looks like it's a Star Wars thing that I would have been obsessed with as a 12-year-old. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm actually super excited for this. There's a list of directors. I'm going to do another video on that, a Rebel Scum podcast, to talk about the directors involved. But there is grade-A talent involved in Skeleton Crew and putting this thing together on Disney Plus, and I think this show is going to be a lot of fun, but it is also going to be more geared towards younger audiences, towards children. Get the children. You got to hook the children, right? That's who you want to love Star Wars right now. You need the kids. They have me. They have the 30, 40, 50, 60 year olds, whatever. They're in. They might be out because of things that they've done, but with Andrew, I think you have them, and now you can appeal to a different audience, but still a Star Wars audience, and I think that's one unique aspect of Star Wars that they have, is that it is a franchise for children, but the children that it was made for are adults now, and so you can grow and expand with that, but you still can't lose sight of what made Star Wars Star Wars, and that's the action figures, and look, they've lost sight, and kids don't play with action figures anymore, as far as I know anyway, but or not as much, as you say, but it's still got to appeal to those kids who want to buy the toys, who maybe want to play them on Fortnite or whatever. You've got to appeal to a younger generation. I think Skeleton Crew looks like it's on that train. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, a nice kid adventure with some darkness to it. I keep saying, I said this on another video about Batman the other day, you got to have some grit and darkness to your children's stories for kids to really care, to really feel impactful. Kids want to feel, kids always want to be adults, right? They always be like, treat me like an adult. Until you're an adult, then you want to be a kid. But you've got to remember that. Like kids want to think that they're watching something for adults. When I was a kid, I would watch Indiana Jones. I would watch Star Wars. I would watch uh, Ninja Turtles. I would watch what else? Like Toxic Crusader. Things like that. Like there were things that weren't for kids, but were for kids. And we watched them and we loved them. And it was a very different time, obviously. You can't do a lot of it. You can now. But I think they, there needs to be a touch of danger that's not necessarily present in a lot of things for children anymore. And they got to feel that. And once you get that, if you can get that in them, I think you're going to inspire a whole new generation to be Star Wars fans. And whatever's going on with Jude Law's character, I think that's the key. I think as much as the kids or who our kids are going to identify with, I think it's Jude Law's character. If they can do something special and unique with him, which it sounds like they're trying to do and hopefully have done, then you're going to get those kids that want to be, you know, that can see themselves in the children in the show even more excited and invested, and that's who they're going to want to be. They're going to be Jod Nana Wood, which the name is still not my favorite name. But I love that. On one hand, we're getting Andor in a few months, and before that, we're getting Skeleton Crew, and they're both Star Wars, but they're both very different from each other. And I love the idea that you can have two very different genres that both feel like Star Wars genres and appealing to the same crowd but a different crowd, right? There's a little bit of bleed through, but you can acknowledge like, hey, this is for kids. Like that's how it was when I was a kid. Like, okay, Ewoks and droids were for kids and no one had a problem with that. There were Ewoks movies and no one had a problem with that. And I don't think any adult should have a problem with Skeleton Crew if it turns out to be more of a kid adventure. But if it does have that Stranger Things element to it, I'm, I'm all in because Stranger Things is great. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Are you looking forward to Andor or Skeleton Crew? Do you think Andor could be the Empire Strikes Back of Disney Plus? Thanks for watching, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, may the force of others be with you.